Mark. I'm Mark Rosenbaum. I'm a partner at uh, PwC. Uh, I made Aliyah five years ago from uh, New York and uh, working in the technology practice here in Israel. I came from PwC New York in the technology group. I worked a few years, uh, my specialty is capital markets. I worked a few years in uh, the national office as well. And um, th this time of year, or this time, uh, this is a period that we're in is very exciting. Uh, this past year alone, I've worked on myself here in Israel, five IPOs outside of Israel. Uh, most notably, no Mobileye, which was quite exciting given it was the largest one outside of Israel. And I guess a little bit contrarian to what we've been talking about before, but really working together is really what we're seeing in the tech market in general. And I'd like to take it even a step higher globally what's happening in the tech market. Right now, the past, in the first half of 2014 for technology companies, there were more IPOs in the last six months than compared to all of 2013. And even more exciting for Israel, besides the nine or 10 that are already listed and more that are coming right now, is that globally, uh, about th in Q2, we're seeing a trend where 30% of companies going public are cross-border, meaning they're outside of their home domain, uh, which is really exciting, if you will, that more and more is being recognized in the marketplace, Israel obviously being one of them, but 10 countries have done this uh, in Q2 as an example, Israel being one of them, which is very exciting. So we sort of have to find a bridge because of the valuations, the number of deals, and size and scale, clearly we can never compete with uh, outside like the United States, but there's no reason why we can't find a nice bridge to work that way. Uh, and that's something we really need to think about as to how do we bridge that gap, if you would, from where people are sort of, like you said, just you started off, are in that middle phase and where they have to go. Can they find that bridge? Because there is exciting things that are happening outside Israel as well. Thank you, uh, Mark. As you see, we have very different profiles, very different experiences and competencies here, uh, and that makes for an interesting discussion. My next round uh, of questions, in fact, is uh, the role of, uh, uh, of, public, of public funding and of government funding, because uh, uh, this was uh, uh, sort of behind uh, uh, what all you were saying. It was... There's clearly a, a return on investment, how much the technology will pay for the dollar I put in that company, but there's also a, uh, something the country that Israel wants to get back from the companies. And uh, I must say, coming from Europe, coming from Italy, we look up uh, at you guys for how you manage your incubator system, your, uh, your, your government-backed uh, um, funding schemes. So this is something, actually, that is, I think your answers will be relevant not only for the crowd here in Israel, but also for people outside the Israeli market. Who wants to start? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, have to, I have to add something about Yossi's point. Uh, I come from the VC community after 10 years there. Uh, one of uh, the things that is very important to note, and I see this in Bank Lumi today, Israeli companies always look uh, you know, to the US, to the public markets, uh, and we're, what we're seeing is that the public markets, in the, in, at least in New York, has become very, very difficult. Uh, companies that sell $20 million and are not profitable are not relevant anymore. Uh, you need to get, go through a certain stage. You need to sell for $100 million. You need to have visibility into your profitability. And we're completely neglecting the ability to reach all these institutional investors who are here and who need to deploy a lot of money. And I want to just give one good note, uh, is that Bank Lumi was involved recently in an IPO of an Israeli technology company, uh, which was uh, doing uh, roadshows in Israel and outside of Israel. And I can tell you that the interest and the support from the Israeli institutional investor was extremely important for the success of the IPO. And I think that if, you know, I'm, I'm very bullish on, on what, uh, is going to happen in, New York, in the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange because I think that there is a lot of capital here and we're just crazy not to use it. So anyway, I had to, I had to add this. <laughs> well, Yossi, I, I must ask you at this point, very straightly, why should a company go for uh, the, the Tel Aviv stock market instead of going for NASDAQ? I mean, that's uh, just to put it very bluntly. I think, and I may be slightly controversial, 
if a company's ecosystem size and natural place is NASDAQ, more power to them. Seriously, it's right. A company should go to the market that fits them, they should make the economic decision, that should be the only decision they make. But if you look around the world at exchanges which are more, for lack of a better term, regional, Canada, Australia, um, a little bit in the Nordic countries, the, not the main market, other markets. Even in the, in the UK, they've created a, not really a, the same style of market as the main one. You'll find markets that specialize, and as a result, when they do, there is an advantage of being here. And just let's play with the numbers. Um, take a company that went public on NASDAQ and is worth, let's say, market cap of three quarters of a billion dollars. Sounds great. Nobody cares. It's tiny. It's not going to be in any index in the US. None. Because it's too small. On the other hand, if the same company came here, it will be in all the major indices. There will be ETNs, our version of ETFs, um, created on it, which, by the way, will mean um, once, and it's in the process, the international creators of, of those exchange-traded funds or notes coming to the market, we get exposure to um, investors from outside. So if we manage to create the ecosystem that specializes in high tech, biotech, clean tech, whatever tech we, we, we choose, and we manage to do the work with institutional investors to pay attention, if you are of a certain size, it's better for you, it's more natural for you to be in a local, on, the, on the local market. And Canada did this greatly. They have a market that specializes in, in energy technology and it's very, very successful. And we should do the same. So I never go to, I won't mention names, a very large Israeli company that went um, public in NASDAQ and say, come here. Because they should be where they should be. One other point, which may be a little obscure to people who are not in the business of exchanges and such, there is a phenomenon in Israel which is not common in the world which we should change. And is there anybody here from a company that listed on NASDAQ that is willing to answer a quiz? Oh, come on. One. Nobody. So I'll do it. Um, SodaStream is a company that listed on NASDAQ, I don't know. No, sorry. Yeah, SodaStream, some time ago. And if you ask the, the people at the company, where does your stock trade, they'll say NASDAQ, and they'll be wrong. Because as it happens, outside of Israel, the listing, the, going, the, the issuing of shares or that, and the trading of it are unrelated activities. So for instance, a company like DuPont, which has been in the market in the US for 70 years, less than 25% of its trading is done on the New York Stock Exchange. It trades everywhere. Israeli companies that list on NASDAQ trade in, fact in Frankfurt, etc. So the decision to issue shares and where you trade is unrelated. I think what we should do, and we're working on it, is to basically make a business decision that any company we think fits, which in effect means any Israeli company, regardless whether it wants to list or doesn't, we should trade it here. Um, and at that point, the Israeli investors can come trade in shekels, it will be cheaper. And the whole issue, where do you go public, is slightly less important. Okay. Maybe just one thing, maybe with that, uh, just not to go against that. It, I think there was a survey recently by Investor Relations that you're absolutely right. There's like, I think 70 or 65% of CFOs really don't care what exchange they're on. Investor Relations pulls that all the time because people make this huge issue about where they got to be. They're all possible. It's just a matter of scale. And I think we have to think there's no competition here, okay, because it's just the size of it is too different, too big. But there can be a bridge that I think you have to think about because the valuations on the NASDAQ will be higher. That's just the way it is. So we just have to find a, a niche, if you would, and bring the institutional investors to Israel and think about the high-tech market. Like, like we were saying earlier, that's the whole game here. Because once we get to that stage, that's where our funnel, like we do everything else in Israel, we look outward, we'll do the same thing with the stock exchange. It'll be a funnel to look outward as well. And we have to think about regulation that same way. How could we look at regulation at the stock exchange in a way that will help companies go even further out? So that's sort of the way you know, we see it in terms of bridging that way. Uh, it's easy to, to agree with all of you, so there's not much I want to add on this one, but 
there is something that uh, I want to take at the higher level. We are all part, uh, partners in the business of innovation. So we expect innovation from our companies, we expect innovation from entrepreneurs, sometimes from our customers, although that doesn't always work. Um, but uh, one thing where we were behind in innovation is really innovation on the financial side. And at last we see that this innovation is beginning to happen. And why is it happening? Uh, because of greed, good old greed. People are not getting any returns on their accounts in banks, so there's no interest rate, so people become more risk prone, if you will, and we see that all over. And then from time to time you hear about mega IPOs like Mobileye, so everybody says, how come I'm... Everybody has the feeling that there's a party going on and they're not invited. You know the feeling? You know, like, yeah, there's a better panel over there. Uh, so, so with that kind of an approach, you get the good basics. Now, how do you make a cake out of all of these ingredients? So I, I think the best way to look at it, and we do that in our organization, is sort of a multi-layer cake or a, a pyramid. So at the bottom, you know, you have friends, family, fools, all that. And, and the good news is that the angel investor, investor groups are really, really happening. You know, we've got new models like our crowd, like crowd, crowdfunding. We've got funds such as yourself. So there's a lot of innovation and a, good, a lot of fresh thinking. And the common denominator here is what we call democratization. You know, people who have never had access to this asset class because they didn't have information or contacts or vehicles or enough money can participate. And that's good news. That is really good news, hopefully. But, but, but people can participate. We're seeing more and more from that. We are now seeing the government, and the government here has had a great track record of supporting and working with the industry. As in Israel, it gives me physical pain to compliment our government for anything. But it's true, and, and they really deserve, throughout the last 20 years, a lot of compliments. And now they're refining the business model. As you may have read, they're changing the structure of the chief scientist. A lot of regulatory problems have been dealt with as they relate to IP ownership and so on and so forth. So there's a whole process of moving along as well. If, and if there was one place that we had encouraged them to do more, it's on the institutional side and to look for sectors where there isn't enough funding. So we're not necessarily looking at, you know, hot internet things, but biotech, um, we're looking at uh, clean tech because clean tech is coming back now. So those areas we're finding, uh, or even high tech for low tech is another category. So we're trying to encourage them to, to basically assist the market in things that the market is finding hard to do on its own. Uh, and then there's another stage where we haven't, we haven't really solved the problem and that is we have a lack of capital at the A and B round level. And that's a real dearth of capital. We, we are suffering, we collectively as an industry. This is where we're losing companies that we probably shouldn't have. Uh, and this is where we believe there's a great opportunity now. So if you want to participate, talk to me after the panel. But this is really where there's a big opportunity. Thank you, Yoav. So you put many things on the table there, from animal instincts, uh, uh, powering the economy to uh, the, the, the new forms of investment. Uh, Jeremy, you, you're part of the innovation that Yoav is talking about, angel investor. I mean, you, you scout for companies and you invest, so... Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say something about government funding in Israel. I saw many delegations from all Europe coming here to understand, to try to understand the the, how it works. But at the end, what I'm seeing and what I think is that it's not the government funding. And it's not because the government is putting money in high tech only that startups are more successful here in Israel. It's only because the government is supporting these startups. I mean that when you are talking with Shimon Peres or Benjamin Netanyahu, most of the time, where they're not talking about the Palestinian conflict, they're talking about high tech. And so the, 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 the main difference we have here in Israel uh, about innovation is we, everyone is supportive. Everyone, everyone is supportive, yeah, entrepreneur. I came here with a taxi and he, gave, he explained me what was a startup or his, uh, uh, or his friend and uh, what, why is this startup is a very good idea. He wanted to raise money in a taxi. You know, he was a taxi driver. Did, did he know uh, about it, Uber? What? Did he know about Uber coming uh, to Israel? Or? <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, he, he knows that and he's very embarrassed, but he will, he will join Uber. <laughs> He, 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 took my, he, he took my email. Wait, what do you say? <laughs> this is the first time I took it. He said, I remember you. You are 100 investors. I have a startup for you. You know, it's, it's, I'm seeing that only in Israel. You know, taxi drivers all want to launch startups. I think they, they can't, but 
but most of them want to have a project. And I think that this supportive way of, of seeing a startup entrepreneur like uh, Aero is, is the most important thing of this country. I'm coming from France, when you have wonderful entrepreneurs. I think that the French entrepreneurs are one of the best entrepreneurs I'm seeing all over, all over the world. But what we, we were missing, is coming now, it's changing now a lot in France, uh, is that, okay, uh, when we wanted to talk with, I was a former entrepreneur also too in France, and when we wanted to talk with, uh, with a minister, with a deputy, with anyone, okay, they didn't care about us. We, we, we were small young guys playing with computers. And what we are seeing here now in Europe is that, and thanks to the Silicon Valley model, thanks to the Israeli model, is that it is a new world when you are seeing all people, all the whole industry supporting the new startups and investing in new startups. In 99, 2000, 2001, a lot of people from the oldest industry lose a lot of, of money in startups. It took, I think, 10 to 13 years for them to come back and to, to invest again in startups world. And I think that this is the most important thing today. It is, you can imagine how many people are sending me emails saying, I have money, I want to invest in startups. I just don't know which one. So I think that, so, so this is what we are seeing here. I think that if we have a very good Tel Aviv stock exchange with uh, perhaps a little smaller company than what we are seeing in NASDAQ, we have a lot, a lot of investors from all over the world who want to invest in, this start, in these companies. Because, yes, the, the world is not supporting all this, this high-tech industry. 